they are not really a car company. What they are looking at, I think, is energy and how are they going to control energy. And quite frankly, I think that, uh, that without a question of a doubt, Tesla is the best energy company, new energy company, on the planet. And they will dominate, I'm sure of it. Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, I'm playing a few clips with the automotive expert of automotive expert Sandy Munro, detailing the progress Tesla has made in terms of the engineering from Model 3 to Model Y and just how far ahead of everyone else in the automotive industry they really are. So let's see what Sandy had to say. Hey guys, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the links in the description to Weeble and Stake. Let's get back to it. One of the things that, uh, that, that I think uh, that's different about Tesla than everybody else is uh, number one, um, they, they like the idea of going to vertical integration. Um, most every other car company, except for maybe Toyota, Honda, and, uh, and VW, um, every other car company has been drinking the Kool-Aid, as it were, saying that what we need to do is outsource. We need to outsource, outsource. Well, that's fine, but if you don't make it, you don't understand it. Mm. And so that's the first thing that I see different about Tesla than everybody else. And the second is, they don't have customers, they have a cult. They have a cult. People absolutely flat out um, are devoted and dedicated to the products. And so uh, Elon Musk asks for information to come back to him. He wants, he wants his ideas to come from the people who, uh, um, who, who, who buy his cars, who, uh, who are loyal followers not just customers. Two very poignant points there from Sandy to open things up. The first of which is probably the most important, and that is that Tesla is actively vertically integrating as much as they possibly can. Meanwhile, most other automotive manufacturers are going the polar opposite direction and outsourcing everything, meaning they literally don't know what the f is going into their products. And inside their products is a total cluster because there's no communication and collaboration between this team and that team internally because they've outsourced everything. You know, if Tesla was a man, I tell you what, he would be one of the most attractive guys on the planet. And I'm saying this as a straight male who understands how attractive confidence and competence is to most women out there. Let's explore this analogy a little bit further. What signal does it send as a company if you have the confidence to say, you know what? We need a better chip than is available. Nvidia can't make it. AMD can't make it. We'll just make our own chip. We don't know how to do it, but we'll figure it out because we've got fucking gigantic brains and equally large balls. And then they go and do it. The very fact that Tesla is vertically integrating everything they possibly can and most of the rest of the automotive market is trying to partner and collaborate and outsource should really tell you what the future is looking like. Tesla is thinking long term. They're willing to put up capital now to bring down costs in the future. They're willing to invest in things that will only pay for themselves over time as they scale even larger than they're at now. So we're seeing a real clear insight into what Tesla plans to be doing and the size they plan to be doing it at in the future. Tesla is vertically integrating everything they can, driving costs down, owning their technology technology, integrating, improving, optimizing. Meanwhile, everyone else is outsourcing, signaling that they have absolutely no confidence in their own abilities. This is not a good sign. And again, with the analogy, insecurity, lack of confidence, just not attractive. We were very critical of Tesla when we first um, started working on their vehicles, when we did the Model 3. Everything that was conventional about a car company was, uh, was missed or, or, or wasn't part of the action, as it were, when it came to when it came to their car, the gaps were horrific. The weld spatter was everywhere. I mean, nothing fit. I, I, I mean, I, I criticized their, their, their products heavily because they didn't match what I was used to seeing. I wasn't used to seeing anything that was so poorly built from a, from a car company. And then we lifted off the top hat and started looking at what Tesla's really all about, the electronics the motors, the batteries, the connectivity, all the things that really and truly make a difference to this batch of people, Tesla people, and other people don't care about, the ones that are looking for, is there a good gaps? Do the doors close nice? They, those two groups are diametrically opposite. So if we look at this, this is the Model Y, we saw a vast difference between the Model Y and the Model 3. The Model 3 we thought was pretty much junk. And we made a lot of comments about why it was that that car really shouldn't even be on the road. This car, they took a lot of suggestions. 
One of the suggestions that we had when we looked at the Model 3 was, why are there over 170 parts to make up this rear end? I mean, that's ridiculous. Little teeny patches welded uh, using self-piercing uh, self, uh, self rivets, self-piercing rivets going this way, that way, whichever way. Just ridiculous, just a, a ridiculous, and then glue, it was everywhere. We suggested that, hey, you know what, you, you should be making this, uh, this rear quarter area here for the wheel wells. It, it, this could be one piece, and this is the mega casting, <clears throat> one of them. There's two mega castings that are joined together, and that's what basically makes up the whole rear end of the car. And we had suggested X, but they, they gave us X squared when they came up with this. I'm gonna play a quick clip for you guys just for a little bit of additional context. This is Elon Musk speaking with MKBHD a few years ago in the Fremont factory. It's a lot of little things, like looking at, 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 each, uh, at each little little tiny part, each process, say is the process necessary? Like, because the best part is no part, best part of process is no process. With the benefit of hindsight, we can see that those words really have penetrated every area of Tesla. From their factory design to the product themselves, Sandy was just saying there, they replaced nearly 200 parts with two large mega castings. And not only what he suggested, but Tesla continued to innovate beyond that. And just remember, if you take a part away, you take a process away, you don't need to attach, glue, affix, align, anything like that, right? Deleting a part isn't just a cost saving, no, 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 it's a time saving, it's a labor saving, it's a complexity saving. And the evolution just between the Model 3 to the Model Y, Sandy Monroe was laughing at how inefficient and horrendously the typical automotive manufacturing stuff was related to the Model 3, made some suggestions to improve, and Tesla went beyond even his own suggestions. Tesla is innovating at a staggering rate from product to product, from factory to factory, not incrementally, staggeringly. This is the big, one of the biggest castings we've ever seen, certainly the biggest casting we've seen in a, in, a, in a car company. This is just spectacular. And not only did they do what we said was getting rid of the wheel inner and turning it into something new, they, this thing's got all kinds of stuff. The, uh, the shock and suspension system already built in. All kinds of little areas where I don't have to have a secondary operation to put in a clamp or something. It's all built right into the casting. This is brilliant. And one of the things that I really went crazy on was the, uh, the little well, if you like, that, uh, that I said, this should be one piece and it should be made out of plastic. You know what? Normally, if we give criticism, there's going to be an engineer that has what we call the ugly baby syndrome. Don't call my baby ugly. Well, if we look at this, obviously, they don't care about ugly babies. This is one piece, and I'm pretty sure that now, uh, if, you, uh, if you go in and have a look at a, at a Tesla Model 3, you're going to find that's been made into a plastic part. They don't stand still. And they don't care about, they have no pride when it comes to making the change. They're not, uh, they're, they're interested in making sure that the product is as good as it can possibly be. The way that I translate these comments from Sandy would be that the Tesla engineers are powered by logic and reason, not emotion. Instead of talking about the ugly baby, I would suggest that they don't tend to get butt hurt when they find a new solution or somebody else on the team can find a new solution because everyone is oriented towards improving, not keeping their heart, their emotions and their feelings intact. Let's talk about some of the innovation. So if we, uh, if we look at this, this is the octo valve. And, um, and this is really kind of a brilliant thing. When we look at this, we're looking at uh, the, the chamber that's inside that basically gives you a short circuit or makes it hot or cold inside the car or makes it hot or cold for the battery, all in one little blob, as it were. There's a lot of things that kind of look like, maybe, uh, that there's, there's, there's something different here, something different. This doesn't look quite right for, uh, for uh, a North American, or sorry, any car company. And that's when we start looking at this. These are the, um, these are the uh, uh, manifolds that, uh, that we found inside. These things fit together like a glove. And, and quite frankly, the, uh, the, the way that these things are manufactured are, are, are absolutely brilliant. The costing uh, for this is much, much less than, than what you'd see for something other than that. If we look at a conventional car company, we're looking at dozens and dozens of pieces all over the different uh, parts of the car to try and do what these three parts are going to be doing 
or three, this, this subassembly is going to be doing in one area inside the vehicle. There's two layers to this. The first is that this system, the Octoval, which broke the internet and gave engineers nerdgasms the world over when we first heard about it. This system has integrated many other components and parts that's actually using far less space, takes far less time to assemble, it's far less complicated, there's less parts and processes involved. So it saves space and complexity and parts and processes and time and labor, all of that sort of stuff. But completely independent of that, the actual engineering in this thermal management system, the Octo Valve, is so advanced that Tesla has found a way to allow the Model Y, which is 10% more massive, it weighs more than the Model 3, to have an almost identical range because the actual way they're managing the heating and cooling in the vehicle is so much more efficient that it uses so much less battery power, which means that the range is extended, okay? So there's two dimensions. It isn't just the fact that they found the way to integrate and make stuff smaller. That would have been cool, but the actual effect of that new system that they've built is insane. And again, this is just from one generation to the next, Model 3 to Model Y. What about the next vehicle and the next one and the next one? We look at the electronics. The, the difference between this and what was in the Model 3, only one difference really, and that is the improvements. They made improvements to this DC-DC uh, converter, and they also made the improvements on the Model 3. If you buy a Model 3, they don't care about, you know, only big changes come in at model year, they make changes all the time. And they don't care about what model year came out. They don't, they don't care about it. They changed everything. What I find really puzzling is why Tesla is the only automaker who actually doesn't have model years and just continually updates and improves and optimizes and makes their products better throughout the year as they can. Their engineering minds are constantly working on ways to get better and make the product better. What's everyone else doing? And then we start looking at this and it's not hard to see that uh, where it used to be an NVIDIA chip, it's a Tesla chip. They designed it themselves. Vertical integration. They are doing a fabulous job at moving, moving up the food chain because they don't want to have to pay somebody else. Uh, they don't want to pay that profit. They want to keep the profit in-house. People say, oh, it can't possibly be right. We've been criticized for our costing and whatnot. But you know what? Our costing is accurate because what we're doing is we're costing a chip like that. We reverse engineer these things. So we're, co we're costing this chip not by what NVIDIA would sell it for, but what it costs to manufacture. That's why, that's why a lot of the costs on the Tesla are different than what internal people will, will discuss and say, well, no, it can't cost that. It has to cost this because they're thinking it's bought from the outside. I'm going on the record here, guys. When people learn about the margins on the Made in China Model 3s, they're going to lose their minds. But when they hear about the margins on the Made in US Model Ys, their brains will explode. And when the Cybertruck factory has been built and the production has ramped and people realize how quickly and cheaply Tesla is making these things, it's game over. Like the Cybertruck is the moment everyone goes, what the actual fuck? There's a thing called a scotoma. Basically, it, it means that it's a blind spot. It's, uh, it's something where... Uh, the information that you're giving me doesn't match anything in my head, so it can't be right. That kind of stuff is what's happening to the car companies. They can't, they can't figure it out. It doesn't make sense to them. And that's kind of what we see here with the, uh, with the, the, the problems associated with the, uh, uh, with the car companies now trying to move ahead. To hear Sandy Munro, the automotive expert of automotive experts, talking about the fact that most of the OEMs out there are blind to what's in front of them. They literally can't even see before their very eyes. Jeez, that's a little bit worrying, isn't it? Let's look at one of the aspects that I think is just absolutely staggering. If we look at the high voltage wiring for the Tesla Model 3 over there, that one cable does it all because everything else is integrated. Their, their engineers and whatnot work as a team coming together. Even the guys over here, because we know that on the, uh, we know that on the Octo Valve, there was a lot of stuff that was done by the uh, engineers over at uh, SpaceX. That, that's a big deal. Having somebody design it, it looks more like a circuit board than it does uh, a, a mechanical uh, device. Same thing is true here. Everything was in the electronics bay, so that one cable does everything. And unfortunately for the Chevy Bolt, those are the cables you need to have in order to do what this is doing. These kinds of things hold everything back. 
What a brilliant illustration of the benefits and efficiencies of vertical integration. Visually, we can see there, this is what happens when you've got vertically integrated teams working together, communicating, moving towards common goals versus the Chevy Bolt, which clearly by comparison is an absolute clusterfuck of mess and unnecessary waste and inefficiency. They are not really a car company. What they are looking at, I think, is energy and how are they going to control energy? And quite frankly, I think that, uh, that without a question of a doubt, Tesla is the best energy company, new energy company on the planet. And they will dominate, I'm sure of it. Sandy is absolutely spot on there. Most people think of Tesla as a car company, an automotive company. Sure, a few people go, oh yeah, they make solar as well and batteries, but no, they're an energy company. They're getting into the energy business, they're disrupting the energy business. Generation, storage, and major amounts of its use as well in transportation. Tesla's core product is batteries and software. Together, this controls the use, storage, and generation of energy, and this is gonna to continue to expand over time. I hope you guys have found this video insightful. The phenomenal improvements Tesla is making in their engineering, improving their manufacturing techniques is absolutely mind-blowing. Just looking at the differences from the early Model 3s to the current Model Ys is absolutely stunning and they're just getting started. And don't get confused and think they're just make physical things. Again, the software component, controlling energy, auto bidder, people becoming virtual power plants, selling power back to their grid. This is going to absolutely become one of the biggest and most exciting companies on the planet, actually in the solar system. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Steak. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.